Hi, it's T with Tea Quilts, and today we are making meatloaf. So the first thing we're going to do is go over ingredients for meatloaf. I'm actually going to use just ground beef, but you could also use ground pork if you like. You can add a mixture of the two. You can add ground sausage if you like. But today I'm just using ground beef. I'm going to be making this with one pound. So I'm going to go over how you would adjust this recipe if you're using more meat. Um, for every pound of ground beef, you're going to need one cup of milk one cup of breadcrumbs which we'll get to later in here and you're going to need two eggs and then your your onion and your garlic all your other ingredients they're just as needed I don't measure those things but we'll talk about that as I make it so the ingredients that I'm using today one pound of ground beef one cup of milk this is just two percent milk two medium to large size eggs I'm going to have one cup of multigrain Cheerios that I crunch up. I'm, I hardly ever use breadcrumbs. I mostly use multigrain Cheerios. I especially like to keep my stale cereal for this. Or you can also use stale crackers. So that's why I hardly ever buy breadcrumbs. Um, an onion, you're going to need like... Since I'm doing just one pound, I'm using a small onion, but if you were increasing it, then you would also increase that. I'm going to use about two of these three garlic cloves here. We're also going to season our meatloaf with seasoned salt, black pepper, paprika, parsley, ground thyme, uh, chives are in here. And then we're also going to use Worcestershire sauce. Uh, as a side item, I'm going to also be adding more milk to ketchup here. I like to use a thicker base ketchup, and I'm going to use that for my sauce on top with milk. We'll talk about that once the meatloaf is done. And then as a side item, I'm going to be actually using uh, white long grain rice. Sometimes I make this and I mostly use mashed potatoes, but today we're going to make it with rice so let me get my cup of bread crumbs crushed I'm going to open up my eggs and just lightly beat them and I'm also going to go ahead and cut my onion so I'll be right back when I have all of those things done So we're now ready to mix up our meatloaf. First thing we're gonna do is, I'm actually wearing food safe gloves uh, because I'm going to be messing with raw meat. So we're just gonna go ahead and clip this open. And then we're just going to push out our ground beef meat.
and I actually purchased this meat from a farmer so it has no fat it is actually grass-fed beef here and now we're gonna go ahead and add in our onions that we have minced our breadcrumbs and again these were made from Cheerios and then I can go ahead and add in my eggs I like to pour in my milk, but sometimes if you don't want your ground beef to be too soupy, or you can also use this for meatballs as well, then I will just pour some of my milk in. Leave about a quarter to a third of a cup and see where it's going from there. I also use Whiskershire sauce. And this bottle is empty, so I have another one ready. Right here. And this is where I don't do any measurements. I just kind of put what I like also salt and pepper to taste I also use paprika again I just take them straight out the container so I don't measure these items and I've got some ground thyme here parsley and I like a lot of parsley so let me open that up and just put some parsley out here a lot of parsley and uh, you can also add like green beans if you like not green beans green bell peppers um, and you can mince those as well if you like and then I just put some chives in there as well last thing that we're gonna put in is our garlic cloves and I have a garlic press here. I purchased this a long time ago from Pampered Chef, which my uh, chopper also came from Pampered Chef as well. And then I just lift up and pull out the part I don't want. And then we're going to add one more at least. I love garlic. Again, I've got the garlic in my press. And just press down. And then pull the parts I don't want out. And then it also has a cleaner here that you press onto the bottom, into the holes here. And then it will push the, the stuff that's left on the inside that you can't get to. It presses it out. But I'll do that later when I'm cleaning it. And now we're ready for the fun part. But what I'm going to do first is clean up some of this area. And then I'll be right back. So we're back. And our next step now is to mix all of this together. So I like to use a glove when I do this part just because I don't want all of this all under my fingernails. <laughs> and you could also mix this on your countertop, but I like to control it when it's so loopy like this. So I can already see that I got quite a bit of moisture in here. So I probably will not be adding the remainder of my milk. And if you think you're mixture is too thin then you can go ahead and add more breadcrumbs if you like or more meat if you have it but i like it to be very moist a lot of this moisture is going to cook out into the pan So now we're ready to make this into a meatloaf and put it into our dish. 
So now we're ready to make this into a meatloaf and we are actually going to um, just take it and put it into one of these loaf pans. This is mostly where I cook bread or cakes in here and I will also cook meatloaf. Now because this got a lot of moisture and things are going to run off. I normally would not spray this pan, but I am going to go ahead and spray it today just to make sure nothing sticks at the bottom. I'm just going to use some Pam. Just to make sure. I don't normally make one pound meatloaf, so I have not made one in this pan in a while. So that's why I'm going to spray it just in case. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to take our meatloaf and put it into our pan. So we're going to have our oven preheated to 350. And then once that occurs, we're going to cook this for about 45 minutes. I'm going to come check it and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this in the oven. Now it's time to make our tomato based uh, topping that we're going to put on our meatloaf. Now you can make this with tomato paste if you want and add milk into tomato paste. But I just find plain old ketchup works very well. And again, as I stated, I like to use a thicker tomato ketchup because... You're going to be adding milk and I don't want it to get too thin and runny but I'm just going to squeeze in again this is where I do not do measurements I just make sauce and make it look how I want it to look and I like to make a little extra so that I can have some when I'm cutting my sandwich and making it into an actual uh, meatloaf sandwich and then again, I'm not measuring, I'm just pouring in some 2% milk. And then I just stir until I get either the color I want or the consistency I want. So it just depends on your brand of ketchup. And I do realize that Heinz is not as thick as it used to be back in the day. <laughs> A lot of things are changing, so... This is the kind of color that I like. So I think we're gonna stop right here and we've got this consistency. So if you use a thinner ketchup, you may not get your color. So that's enough for that. Our meatloaf is currently cooking. It has two more minutes in the oven. And when I get that out, we will come back and I will show you the next step. So the meatloaf is ready and this is currently what it looks like. I like to try to go ahead and drain any excess oil and I don't drain it into my disposable container until I make sure that this oil is cool. So I'm just like letting it drain off the, any excess that's in here. I've done a pretty good job. I didn't put all the milk in so I don't have as much to pour out, which is good. Okay. So now we want to add our tomato topping. And so I just go ahead and just pour this over my meatloaf. And as I said, I tend to make more than what I need. And I can always make more for leftovers too, but I try to just go ahead and make it all at the same time. 
so I don't have to do it again. And then I just put this back in the oven to cook for about another five to seven minutes just to make sure that the this mixture gets heated. I'll do that and I'll be right back. So we're back and I just took this meatloaf out of the oven after letting it cook for an additional five minutes for the ketchup based topping. And I am now going to finish off some rice that I'm in the process of making. I am not going to include how I make rice here. I think most people know how to make rice. I am going to add just some onions and carrots into my rice uh, and then that's going to be it. And I'll plate this up when I'm ready to eat. I'm back and it's now time to plate our meal. I did go ahead and finish off my rice and we're just going to put some rice on bottom. And I am going to cut a slice of meatloaf. Now we all know that first slice is very hard to get out. So I'm just going to do the best that I can here. Woo! <laughs> Still a little hot. So let's just clean up our plate a little bit. So there you have it. It's my meatloaf recipe. I'll try to remember to type this, the ingredients list up as well, and I'll put it on my website for you. So I'll have a link up at the eye above. Just want to do a taste test here. Guys, that is so good. So many different flavors. Mm. So thank you guys. That's it for now. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.